Okay, so we have um, found out that a GPU is available to us and we now want to use it. So this section of the lesson is on how we can actually use the GPU with our machine learning application. And in the previous section, we set the torch.device to be the GPU. Now, just because we've selected the device to be, a, or just because we've set our device variable to equal the GPU, doesn't mean that everything in PyTorch is gonna automatically run on the GPU. In fact, we are gonna be quite selective in which parts of our processing we actually run on the GPU. Um, now, the way that this is typically done is we only send the most compute intensive and appropriate parts of our machine learning code onto the GPU. And for a neural network, that's basically our model training. Um, and to, to do our model training on the GPU, there are two things that we need to do. Firstly, we need to put the model on the GPU in order to train the, the weights of the model. And secondly, we need to put our training data on the GPU. So the two motivating questions for this part of the lesson are, how do I send my data to the GPU? And how do I train my model on the GPU? So our objectives are gonna be um, learn how to move data between the CPU and the GPU. And that data includes both the weights of the model and the training data itself. And also being able to identify common errors that come up when you're moving data. So in the previous part of the lesson, we had set a variable which we had called device to be equal to CUDA zero, so the first GPU out of our one available GPUs. Um, and we're gonna use this variable to specify which parts of our code we want to run on the GPU. So I'm going to move forward in this um, uh, example from the introduction to machine learning, just to run a few more of the cells. So here we're specifying the data loader for the neural network. Here we're specifying our actual network. So this is a multi-layer perceptron. Um, and the first bit of our code that we're going to want to change is this part. So in this cell, we defined the class that specifies the network. In the following cell, we have called that class and set our model to be equal to the network in that class. Um, and this is where we send the first part of our code onto the GPU, because this is our model. This is what specifies all of our learnable weights. And so I'm going to add another little cell in here. Now, we want to send our model, which here is called NL, NN, sorry, neural network classifier. And we want to send it to the device. And we can do that just by adding two and then device equals device, just like that. Um, so the dot two functionality within PyTorch tells the code where each part of the, the um, each part of, tells PyTorch where each part of the code should be computed. And so here we're sending our model and all of its learnable weights onto a device, which we're specifying using the device um, variable that we set earlier. We could, if we wanted to, replace this with torch.device CUDA zero, just like that. Oops, got an extra, extra dot. And this would always, will also work. Um, we could even put in the whole if statement, the CUDA zero if use CUDA else CPU. But because we've already specified it, we can just say device. Um, and if we run that, that's it. We don't we don't see any difference. Um, if we want to be um, very efficient in our coding, we could actually just add this on here. And when we actually specify our classifier, we can call the class and then send it to the device straight away in which case we don't even need this cell. We can just get rid of it. So at this point, we've sent our model to the GPU, or we've specified that our model should be sent to the GPU. 
But of course, we can't train the model on the GPU without also sending the training data to the GPU. So the data that we're going to train our model with is specified here. So we're using the Xtrain batch data as the input to our training loop. And we also need to send that to the G GPU. So we can add in um, another line here. So we'll copy these. And I'm sending both the feature data and the label data onto the device. And the reason for that is that because the feature data and the model are going onto the GPU, it means that anything that's calculated as an output from the training, such as these output uh, logics and the probabilities here, um, will also exist on the GPU. And so when we pass them into this cross entropy function, we need both of the inputs to the cross entropy function to be on the same device. And it's easier just to keep them on the GPU. So we need to specify that the labels, which are also an input to that cross entropy function, are also on the GPU. So what happens if we now start to run our training loop? So if I hit go here, my training loop, let's give it a second. What we will see is an error. Now, what's helping us to identify where this error is is that we've had one statement, one print statement outputted already, and we can see that that happens at this point in the code. So we know that our error is coming from somewhere after this print statement. And if we have a look at the error, let's see what it says. Okay, it says expected object of device type CUDA, but got device type CPU for argument number two, and then some other stuff which is much less useful. Um, now, the reason we're getting this error is because the training data is not the only data set that we're combining with the model in our training loop. We're also passing our validation data through the model. Now, in this statement here, we have a problem because our model is on the GPU and our validation data is still on the CPU. So we need to add another line in, making sure that our validation data also go onto the GPU. So this looks just like the, the statement inside the, the training data loop. So I see device, and then again for our feature data, Now, if we run our loop, let's see what happens. Okay, so we can see now we've got through the validation step of our training loop, um, as well as getting through that first um, first training update. How many epochs did we set? Let's go back and take a look. 10 epochs. So this is going to run for a little while. There we go. There's a couple of epochs come out. So if we go back to the, to the lesson, um, we can see that we did get this common error, but we've now corrected it. And whilst that training loop is still running, let's take a look at a different part of the code where we could also have um, made things more efficient when we were running on the GPU. And that is when we loaded the data itself. Now, one of the things you'll notice inside your training loop 
is that you're using your training loader and your validation loader. So these are the, um, the functionalities within PyTorch which send the data in batches to the model in order to update the weights through back propagation. Now, one of the issues with uh, using a GPU is that GPUs don't have access to um, all of the memory that is available to the CPU. So the vast majority of the memory that's available to the CPU is known as pageable memory. And pageable memory is not, you can't use it with the GPU. GPUs can only use a subset of memory, um, which is called non-pageable memory. You can think of this as a kind of a staging area. And normally when you're using a GPU, what happens is that the data, um, when you specify it needs to be moved to the GPU, the data get moved from the pageable memory to the non-pageable memory and then onto the GPU. Now we can speed that up by specifying that our training data or our, all of our feature data should actually live in that non-pageable staging, staging area natively. And we do that when we specify the, the data loader up here. Now, let me just add a cell in. So to specify that um, the data loader should use that non-pageable memory for, for, uh, um, for, the, for the training data, we need to set some keyword arguments in our data loader. So our keyword arguments are going to be that the number of workers we should use for our data loader should be uh, just one, like that and that we should use pin memory. So pin memory is another way of, uh, of saying non-pageable memory. Okay, so those are the keyword arguments that we want. And we want to use those keyword arguments only if we're using the GPU. So again, we can use that use CUDA flag that we um, set earlier to say, if we're using the GPU, then we should set these keyword arguments. And if we're not using the GPU, then our keyword arguments can just be empty. So we can add those keyword arguments um, here. We don't need to specify them all. We can just give it a wildcard. And we can do the same for the validation loader. Oh, cancel. Just like that. Put one kind of bracket here. Here we go. So. I'm just going to run that. I'm not going to rerun the training loop because we're already running. Ah, there we go. And our training loop has completed. At this point, we've pretty much achieved our objective. We've got our model training on the GPU. Um, and whilst we've been uh, setting that up, we've encountered one of the most common errors that we see um, when we're trying to move code onto the GPU, which have it's having a um, a data mismatch between the CPU and the GPU, which we saw with our validation data um, when we hadn't moved it onto the GPU. Now, this kind of mismatch happens a lot, not only with moving data onto the GPU to use it with the model, but also when it comes to moving uh, data off the GPU in order to use it in other functions, so functions that we might have defined to run entirely on the CPU. So for example, here where we have the output um, from the model, the output will also be defined on the GPU. But if we wanted to take those probabilities and do something with them on the CPU, we'd have to bring them back. So um, one of the things that it's quite difficult to keep track of sometimes when you're moving things between the CPU and the GPU is which data are on the GPU and which data are on the CPU. So with PyTorch, this is actually quite um, straightforward, we can in fact use a property of the um, tensors themselves, which is the device property, in order to tell us which device 
So here, for example, I've asked what is the device property of the out variable, and it's telling me that our out variable is on the GPU, the, the zero index GPU. If I wanted to bring it back, I would have to say out equals out and send it to device equals CPU. And in fact, not just the string CPU, but torch.device CPU like this. Now, an easier way to do that, uh, in fact, let's just run this and check that that's worked. So if we print out.device, then now we can see that our data have been moved back onto the CPU. But if we did the same thing with the um, probability output, which comes also comes out of our, our model, so if we check the, the device for that data set, we can see that it's still on the GPU. We could, if we wanted to, use a shortcut, which is just to do dot CPU. And then if we print the device again, we can see that it's now on the CPU. Now, in fact, this is a, a sort of an older syntax for moving things between the GPU and the CPU, but it's often very useful, um, mainly for bringing data back from the GPU onto the CPU um, rather than going the other way, um, because we don't really need an if statement if we know that we definitely need something on the CPU, um, because if the data are already on the CPU, say in the case when we have uh, no GPU available and the use CUDA flag is false, then telling something that's already on the CPU that we want it to be on the CPU doesn't damage our code at all. So using the device property for our PyTorch variables is actually very useful. So in this section of the lesson, uh, the key points that we've covered are that both the model and the data should be moved onto the GPU if we want to run our training loop on the GPU. Um, and the other thing, which we haven't talked about in detail, but we'll go into in uh, the later sections of this lesson, is that the data should be moved in batches, which is what we were doing anyway inside our training loop. But we'll see in the next couple of sections why that's important for the GPU.